Hello. So this is my Sinclair QL. Uh, dug it out today because I want to do a little bit of preventative maintenance on it and thought, well, maybe that'll be of interest to somebody else. So why not? Thought I'd post a video. So this is something I bought ooh, about 10 years ago now. A princely sum of £30. It was advertised as an unknown condition, but it seemed to power up fine. The keyboard didn't work. So I had to replace the keyboard membrane, but I believe that's the case with all of these once they get a bit old. And then a couple of months after I bought this, um, I was offered another one. But it was unit only. And the guy said, if you give me 15 quid for it, you can have it. So I, I did. And now I've got two of them. Uh, sadly, I don't use either of them. So I'm not very up to speed on these systems at all. I wouldn't like to say how good or bad they are, I just haven't had any experience using them. But, I'm hoping to change that. So we'll dig into the box and I'll show you what I've got that comes with it. Okay. Quite a neatly laid out little box actually. So we've got the unit itself. That's one side. It also comes with three of these little feet, these little stands. And they just fit underneath the QL itself. It gives it a nice little angle to use. Um, cheap and effective. With mine it came with some software by Cyan. So Archive, Abacus, Easel. And for some reason I've got a second copy of Archive, but that's fine. Got a game of chess, which doesn't work. Well, it did work. Uh, we had a power cut while the disk drive was in operation and it's never worked since, but what a shame. Probably the most comprehensive computer manual I've ever seen. Phenomenally huge thing. And the power brick. So like I've said, I want to do some preventative maintenance on this machine. For me, that means replacing all the electrolytic capacitors. Now, I know that the Spectrums, that was a particular weak point. I don't know if the QL has the same reliability issues in that area, but I think it's unlikely that Sinclair put in more expensive components on this machine than they did the Spectrum. So. Plus the fact that it's 30 years old, I think the safest thing to do is just to change them out altogether. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to have a look at the values of capacitor I need, get them ordered, and then change them all. So they're not difficult to get into. There's four small screws at the bottom, four longer screws at the top, and we just remove those, and then we're in. Right, the unit should separate now. There we go. So we've got the ribbon cable for the keyboard membrane. Disconnect that. 
and then we have the <coughs> excuse me the wiring for the LEDs for the top case and it's just a clip that pulls upwards and then the wires can be removed and let's get rid of that so to remove the main board completely from the case first of all we're going to have to take out the micro drives and they're held in underneath there's two screws at the front There's two screws here in the front corner, one for each. And there's another two screws diagonally opposite at the back. They should just lift out. Yep. And there's a ribbon cable that will detach with it as well. They just pull out of the socket. Just to make life a little bit easier for myself, I find it's easier to take this heat sink off now. And there are a couple of copper washers there as well, just be careful if you do this that you don't lose them. Now the motherboard won't come out until the cover off the reset switch has been removed, there just isn't enough clearance. So rather than just pull it, I just gently lever it from behind. Just till it's loose. There it goes. And then we just have some retaining screws that actually hold the board into the case. Oh yeah, don't forget to take off the expansion slot covers as well. 
Okay, that's free. I'll just ground myself before I touch the board itself. There we go. Oh. And the wiring for the speaker. Again, just lift up the black tab and they'll come free. So push the reset button in and lift. And the whole unit is free. Right, I'm going to make a list of the capacitor values, get them ordered, and as soon as they arrive, I can make a start on the recapping. Okay, so all the caps that I've ordered have now turned up. Let's make a start. Right, so we're done. There's that capacitor that gave me a bit of grief earlier. Highly recommend getting the correct voltage and not something overboard, something that will fit. But it's gone in, so that's okay. And there's some factory modifications. In fact, if we flip the board over, I think, ah, oh, well, there it is. Right, so on the other side of the board we can see more modifications. And this is an issue 5 board, so by this stage they still hadn't got it exactly how they wanted it. Right, so we're all back together, and fingers crossed it still works and I haven't killed it. Yes.
Yeah, and we seem to be working. Let's try loading something. At least one of these micro drives works. Oh, there we go. Well, it's not exactly a disk drive, but hopefully it will get there in the end. Right, well I'll let that uh, do its thing. I'll wrap this up. Thank you very much for watching.